join me. Let's do some art. So as you can see, I have a rather big substrate here today. I picked this up at a thrift store. It has a nice dirty wooden frame and great surface, but I of course want to alter it. And for that, I will use some simple craft paper. I have all these fairly solid colored pages. They have a little bit of a design on them, some scripts, some letters and so on. And I cut the width to size, but now I'm just ripping uh, the pieces and I use my Mod Podge to attach them and it's all pretty self-explanatory. It's just a simple but colorful background. Well, we are already in the middle of October and things have cooled down nicely. I have to say I prefer the fall weather any day instead of the summer heat. So I just returned from a wonderful retreat with my family. We usually uh, rent a cabin once a year up in the mountains and it's always great to see everybody. Now we do see each other regularly as most of my kids live here in Colorado. But it's not too often that we all find time uh, to get together and stay together for a few days. So we had a wonderful week, although a very noisy and lively one. And it took me a few days here at home to recuperate. Anyway, now I'm back into the swing. And yes, today I felt like something colorful. So as you saw, I glued everything down, avoiding any bubbles. And now I will do some distressing. I use the archival ink because it will stand the varnish I want to add later on. Now in order for these colors to become a tiny bit subdued, I added some acrylic paint to the varnish and gave it just one coat. And now this can dry while I start working on something else. So next I am recycling this old canvas that had been drawn on before and I outline a very simple shape and you see right away what I'm after. This will give me the boundaries I will need need in order to start working on the assemblage part of this project. Now for drawing the outline, you can absolutely use a sturdy piece of paper. I just didn't have anything available in the right size. Anything will work as long as it is sturdy, but easy to cut. Now for today's assemblage, I will use mostly very light materials, plastic items, packaging, some kids' toys, and so on. I add a few metal items, but very small, light jewelry bits. And that way, this thing will attach safely to the paper background. So as you can see, I cut it off the frame, but then before I start working on this, I want to do something to this frame. It came with just a little damage here on the top, but it's just one piece was very uh, noticeable. So rather than leaving it there as a blemish, I thought, let's just make this whole frame a bit more uh, rustic. That way it all blends in and nobody ever knows the difference. So I went with my uh, hammer and my screwdriver driver. I dug out a few little pieces of wood. I made some little grooves and now I will color it in using my alcohol inks. I also add a little more to the distressing I did earlier. Now making this little adjustment to the frame so it looks less perfect will make it fit to the final look of my project even better. Also, it got rid of that one little nick, which most likely would have bugged me. So I'm glad it's gone. And now I just add a bit of splatter again with my alcohol ink, one more coat of varnish, and this thing can dry. I can set it aside while I start working on my seahorse. Now the process of doing the assemblage took quite a while. As you see, I do change my mind a lot. I'm very picky about how I place things, how I alter things. So I give you a view into my process and my way of doing it right in the beginning. You see how I place everything and glue it down. But at some point I will go ahead because the process was very long, lots of hours. And so I edited a lot of stuff out. It's very repetitious. It's me looking for things, gluing things down. But of course, I will give you a really close up view of where I end up with this thing. And anything you need to know will like always be in the captions. So please enjoy the process and the music and I of course will be back talking to you in just a wee bit.
So here's my piece all done and of course I want to show you the details one more time. I really didn't mess with the back or the sides of this frame. I only altered the front and I like the way it came out and how it complements the seahorse. And I also like the contrast between the rustic assemblage and frame to the very colorful background. I did a lot of layering in order to give this seahorse some dimension and body. Here you can also see the eye, the painted eye. I had to do a bit of research to figure out what the eye of a seahorse actually looks like and I think I got pretty close. Now in this light the background looks rather shiny but as I turn away the lights you can see that it's really not that strong and I like just the very subtle satin finish. I of course used those clear dew drops on the top there for air bubbles. I also scattered a few blue ones throughout the assemblage. Well, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this project. I will be back with something new real soon. In the meantime, stay well, stay creative and bye bye for now.